After flying all the way from the Midwest, we made it to California to check out Knott's Berry Farm, one of America's best theme parks. just got off of Ghost Rider in the back row. <laughs> that coaster is really good. It's super smooth and it's it's not as aggressive as I thought, but it has really good air time and it's super long too. That's definitely a great ride. We just got off of Hang Time twice. And that coaster is super fun. I always hear people like talk trash about it, but that's actually a really fun ride. The drop is awesome and the inversions would give, well, good hang time. After getting those two back row back-to-back -back rides on hang time, we decided to walk across the pathway and get a ride on Coast Rider, the park's mock rides wild mouse coaster. Now, I went in expecting the worst, having heard that this was one of the world's worst roller coasters. Now, by no means is this meant to be an extreme ride, and I knew that it was built for a family audience. But by golly, this coaster is one of the most boring experiences I've ever had on an amusement ride. It has that one cool drop right off the lift hill, which really is this coaster's saving grace, but after that moment, I'd be amazed if this roller coaster went over 7 miles an hour. The brakes hit so hard, so this coaster is void of any laterals or really any thrill, and the shin guards really take away from any enjoyment you could have on this coaster. I did think it was a little bit overhated, and it wasn't too painful, definitely a solid family ride, but definitely not a great coaster at all, and I'm really disappointed that it replaced the so-called world's best water ride in Perilous Plunge that looked absolutely fantastic. However, after a not-so-great ride, we then went on an absolutely fantastic one. We rode Accelerator twice back-to-back, -back, both in the back row, and this coaster was awesome. The launch was incredible, one of my all-time favorites. The top hat was awesome, and the rest of the ride, despite being pretty short, was super intense and made me gray out on both rides. This is definitely a great supporting coaster in the park. I was a huge fan. We just got off of Jaguar. Uh, that was a solid family coaster. It kind of acts as like a monorail that gives like a nice tour of the park. And if you look at it that way, it does it pretty well, but in no way is it a thrilling coaster at all. just got off of Silver Bullet, the park's b and invert. That was actually really solid. It wasn't overly intense or anything, but it was super smooth. It had no headbanging at all. And that was just an enjoyable ride. It's pretty graceful and it's a lot of fun. After getting lost a couple of times and asking a few employees for directions, we finally made our way over to Montezuma's Revenge. This classic Schwarzkopf shuttle loop coaster had been on my bucket list for a pretty long time, just for the fact of how unique and rare it was. It's the only coaster like it in America. Dating back to 1978, this was one of the world's first ever launch coasters, and you can definitely tell that. The coaster gives off such an old school vibe, it was awesome, and the coaster itself did not disappoint either. The launch is awesome, nothing too intense, but it definitely has a decent push, and the vertical loop is crazy intense, just like all other Schwarzkopfs. The two spikes were pretty solid as well, and overall, I really enjoyed this coaster. Definitely a must ride if you're at Knott's Berry Farm. So we 
just got another back row ride on Goose Rider. It warmed up so much. It felt so much faster. It was so much more out of control. That coaster is worth alone coming to Knott's Berry Farm for. That is elite.